From the Douglas County Courthouse at 8700 Hospital Drive, this is 8700. Hello, and welcome to this episode of 8700. I'm your host, Rick Martin. This show is a special show, not just because of the guests we have, who you'll be meeting very soon, but it's because it's the last show of 8700 to be broadcasted here on DCTV 23. We are retiring the show and we'll have a brand new show airing on September 4th. Joining me today is one of my fellow directors here in Douglas County Government, James Worthington, Director of Development Services and also a County Engineer. Mr. Worthington, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, thank you for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. Tell me a little bit, tell me a little bit about Development Services. Uh, Development Services is located in the courthouse. It is the umbrella department over the building department, planning and zoning, engineering, code enforcement, occupational tax, and then we also oversee property management department, which we oversee 70, around 70 county facilities. Wow, that's a heavy responsibility, it sounds like. It is. My plate is full. <laughs> Constantly in motion, huh? Yes. <laughs> sounds like the Department of Communications and Community Relations as well. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> tell, us, uh, tell me how long uh, have you been with the county? Uh, I have been with the county almost 20 years now. It's, uh, let's say, I believe I'm in my 19th year. Started here in engineering uh, in the lowest position they had at the time, and through the years I've worked my way up all the way through engineering and through the management there and then into this position. Wow, wow. Mr. Worthington, so I, I really want to focus on the move of the Tax and Tag Office. Um, and the appraisal department and GIS over to uh, the government annex building. Uh, we're talking about three really offices and departments. Correct. The number of people. Um, that, how does that role itself fall under your umbrella? So um, one of the scopes of work that, that's assigned to me is a project manager for, for special projects, this type of project. Uh, so that's how I was assigned this this project. Um, so from the beginning, it was it was on me, I guess, to to mm -hmm. kind of work through all the details and get everybody in there. There's nearly 50 employees, like you said, three different offices. They all were moved out of the courthouse and into that facility there. So yes, it has been a uh, monumental undertaking, but we're we're near the finish now. Now, I've got to applaud you because I was, you know, able to observe so much of the, uh, the move in itself. Um, did you have any delays? Did you make your mark in terms of time of the move? How long was, how, when did you find out you were responsible? Walk us through it. Um, it was probably around a year and a half ago. I don't have the exact date, but uh, from the beginning, it was uh, the project was sort of just put in my lap, and then we had to work through the uh, the planning and permitting stages, and we went through multiple iterations with changes in administration along the way as far as trying to make sure we accommodate everyone's needs, and so we went through many iterations of the plans before we actually started construction. We put the project out on the street for for bids. And that took a month or two to get everything in and through the board. Um, once we started, the contractor was proposing it would be a 10-month project, and it ended up taking around a year, um, primarily just due to inclement weather. We had an excessive amount of rain, several different periods through there that delayed everything. Nothing abnormal. Um, so the construction was more or less on schedule. Um, and the move went fairly well. Uh, the departments involved were only closed for two days, two business days, um, and some of them were only closed for one business day. So it's according to how we staged them. So that was minimal impact on the citizens. That's that correct. Had to do tax and tag uh, business, I should say. That's correct. Yeah. 
Um, tell me, I mean, did you have, uh, in addition to, okay, you said the weather. Weather was uh, challenging, um, caused a few delays, right. but you were able to overcome that. Um, tell us a little bit, speak to the, the collaboration, uh, working with the departments. How did you communicate with each of them? Sure. So uh, I did have a lot of assistance from, from many different departments. Um, obviously, the, the three departments that moved, um, tax, tax and Tag Office, Appraisal, and GIS, all of the department heads and several of the managers underneath, we were, we were in contact throughout the project early on in the planning, all the way through the project, and especially in the moving process. And even now, as, as we're kind of working through any kind of little bumps in the road to get everything operating totally smooth, uh, the all of the departments have been great to work with. We had some other departments outside of what ones most folks would consider, including um, like our DOT, our Department of Transportation, they did uh, some work on removing some of the asphalt in the parking lot. They repaved the parking lot, um, so that they were very helpful. The uh, landfill and fleet operations were helpful in getting dumpsters and things out. We did a lot of value engineering early on to try to meet the budget and had a lot of help from um, even like inmate crews where we did a lot of the demolition in-house to save money. So there were a, a lot of others involved and I, I very much appreciate their cooperation. And uh, I guess all of it wouldn't have been possible, I guess, without the Board of Commissioners. That's correct. That's correct. They were very supportive all along. They recognized the need. This was a, a twofold need. One, that um, they need a good facility that's accommodating to the citizens, and then it also helped with the courthouse as far as alleviating some of the, the parking issues we've had here, some of the amount of employees here. So it generally moved about 50 full-time employees out of this building into there, but the tax and tag office is one of the heaviest daily visited departments in the building as far as the, the amount of foot traffic coming and going. So getting all of those to a different facility has really freed up a lot of our parking in, in this courthouse. You know, one of the things uh, with myself recently coming and joining the county uh, less than a year uh, that I've been here, um, that I really didn't realize how connected a lot of the employees were uh, to the courthouse and to the change. I mean, I understand there were some uh, uh, some tears of, 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 you know, looking for the new opportunity and the new experience, but missing the old experience at the courthouse. Speak a little bit about that. So I, I think there was a lot of hesitation early on and uh, from several of the departments and employees that were concerned and not really looking forward to a move or a change. Um, I think they'll all agree now this was a good move for them. They're, everybody seems excited and happy. All of the feedback we've gotten has been positive. So I, I think we're in a good spot. That is really awesome. That is really awesome. You know, one of the things <laughs> I, I say, I see you uh, well-dressed, uh, great sport, sport coat, uh, your tie. Uh, <laughs> I remember on the day of the move, you weren't exactly wearing the same thing. Tell me a little bit about when you arrived and those big trucks were coming and you had that t-shirt and shorts. <laughs> yes, I, I, I did do some work. And that was the um, same day of the great Douglas County shredding event. That's correct. <laughs> uh, we had a, a, a handful of county employees here um, supervising some of the, the movers, including myself. We spent some long hours here, Friday night, Saturday night, and Sunday night into Monday, and, um, <laughs> but hey, it, it got done, so yeah, it that's did. what we needed to do. And what was really impressive, I gotta say too, um, our department, the Communications and Community Relations Department was in charge of the uh, shredding event. We had employees that volunteered for the shredding event and also volunteered huh? with the move. I mean, I, you know, I don't want to call na uh, names in case I miss someone out. I miss right. someone, but, you know, seeing that love and support from county employees w with the transition was, was admirable. Right. 
yeah, the, the, there was some extreme dedication on, on the part of quite a number of employees. And a lot of them have really stepped up and, and been very impressive to me. A lot of them I didn't know as well before this process, but I've, I've really come to know very well and were impressed with their work ethic, to say the least. Wow. Tell me a little bit more, please, if you could, about the feedback you've been receiving. Because I want to tell you, on that day of the ribbon cutting ceremony, oh, it was hot. It <laughs> yes, was it hot, was. wasn't it? Yes, the it sun was. was out, it was beaming. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we televised it, and uh, station manager TJ Jaglinski uh, is going to be airing it uh, very soon on DCTV 23 Presents. Yes. So people will be able to watch it. I want to make sure you spread the word as well. I will do that. I will do that. But tell me about that day, the heat, as well as the joys and the smiles and what you heard. Well, what I was mean, that I, experience like? I think that was just another uh, circumstance of the um, participation, the, the, all of the help, the cooperation from, from all of the departments. We had multiple departments represented in uh, the board, the, um, you know, Lots of different significant political figures were there. Everybody was supportive. Um, there was a lot of great comments made, a lot of good things. All of the feedback, again, was, you know, positive, pushing forward, you know, paving the way for a bright future. And, and I think I think they were all right on. I mean, the, the building is, is a, um, even though it was a used building or an older building, it was stripped down to basically just the steel and then put back. So it's basically a brand new building, top to bottom. It's energy efficient. It's all LED lighting. It's, you know, it's high tech. We've got key card access and queuing system for the, the tax and tag office to speed up the process, make things more friendly. And, and we even have the, uh, the sheriff's office involved, don't That's we? Tell correct. us a little bit about that. Uh, the sheriff's office, so partway through, we were in the discussions of uh, security there, and uh, we, like on many other things, we had a lot of different iterations. We were going one way, go this way, go this way, but we've ended up with the sheriff's office have a deputy in, on staff there, at least one, maybe two different times, um, in, in the lobby area, so their presence is known. They've got a very high-tech security system lots of cameras, um, intrusion alerts, all it's, it's very fancy, it's some good stuff, and um, it, it's nice to have them there. It's very comforting for the staff to know they're safe. And it really is too, and, and I wanna make sure it's clear too for uh, members of the community and the citizens to know that having security there is not necessarily uh, to fear something that could happen, but you know, keep in mind it's 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 a normalcy where cars have been abandoned sure. or maybe not parked. You know, there's a way for law enforcement to do its its job and responsibility where fear and loathing isn't you know part of the uh, uh, the lifestyle, so to speak. You know, so that is really nice. Um, you know, to have the sheriff's office there, I would say. Tell me a little bit about uh, the landscaping, um, you know, because it, 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 uh, the grass, you got the grass <laughs> grown in time. I mean, this came through inclement weather. I mean, you had delays and the grass was green. I saw pictures uh, <laughs> of, of, of a drone shot, really, that's part of their promotion and advertising right. of the move. It looked really beautiful. Who, who did the landscaping? So the landscaping was, um, Again, another collaboration. It was uh, <laughs> property management. Uh, Gail Woody, there, the manager over there, she's into landscaping a lot. So wow. she she was kind of heading it up um, in collaboration with the arborist for the county, the, um, the architect that drew up the plans. But alternative environments did uh, the majority of all of the installation work. Um, that was kind of a key to me. Um, for anyone that was familiar with the the facility beforehand was that um, it was an old used car dealership and a used RV place and it appeared that way so what we wanted to do was break it up and have one section that's intended for public use and one section that's for the employee use so if you may recall there's privacy fence with heavy landscaping kind of splitting all that up and mm -hmm. that was not there before so it kind of divided it 
into more or less two separate campuses where it was just one overall. It's also a lot safer for everybody out there so that the fleet management's in the back of the building. They, you know, they're working on vehicles all the time, some heavy trucks, fire trucks and things. Visibility is not great getting around back there for them, you know, coming in and out of the um, facility. So it's best to keep the public away from that. It also looks great. Yeah. Um, so it was, I think it turned out great. We did, you know, we've got a lot of trees, a lot of sod. Um, one thing I'll, I'll mention, Gail Woody did, um, if anybody's by there. So the small building to the side is the property management headquarters. Mm -hmm. And um, she has planted a, or in collaboration with Alternative Environments, um, basically a butterfly garden. It's got a lot of flowers, a lot of native plants to the area. They're labeled and named. It's not a, a real big garden area, but it is something that's fairly unique to the county that as far as being on county property. Yeah. It's registered on the uh, butterfly trail, so you can go to the website. There's signs out there, um, and there's already butterflies there. So it's, uh, it's unique, and it's, uh, it's a real asset to the county. Ah, oh, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. You know, this has been, as you mentioned, a, a monumental task. Mm -hmm. You have um, accepted the challenge, uh, in some ways I think exceeded the expectations. Um, you are so cool, calm, and collected, <laughs> and, and humble about you know, the responsibility you had. Where does that come from? What's that source? Uh, well, before I started working here, I worked in construction. So I, I've been on both sides of, of the proverbial fence, I guess you could say. So mm -hmm. uh, I've been around both sides. I'm used to stress. I'm used to change. <laughs> um, and I just make the best out of it, you know, so. Wow. What was it like working with the contractors? That, um, uh, how, how was that? Because I know, you know, they were there uh, in this, with the celebration, too, at the ribbon-cutting ceremony, and, and full of joy as well. The contractor was Lichty Commercial Construction, um, and I didn't know much about them going into this. They, they had all of the right credentials coming in. They went through the bid process. Everything was right. Um, I had checked some of their references, and they all came with good reviews. Uh, so I was comfortable moving into it with them. Um, but through the whole process, they've been, they've been stellar. It's, it's been a, a good experience. They've been very open to any changes we needed, any corrections, modifications. They've been very open, very easy to work with. Um, they're still on site doing minor punch out work, fixing little things, um, you know, adjusting things, changing things that different people are looking for. But they've been a pleasure to be with. Now, one of the key things I've forgot to tell uh, uh, folks, but if you didn't know already, the uh, Douglas County Government Annex Building is located at 6200 Fairburn Road, Douglasville, Georgia, um, right next to the Dairy Queen and across the street and away from the Wendy's, you know. Um, location, location, location is, is the key um, and is, is a necessity, you know, for so many people. Uh, it seems to be in a really good spot. Well, and that was key, um, and I know some of the commissioners have mentioned it, um, that that was an important asset uh, it, as far as picking where it could be or, or what different options of, of uh, various locations. They wanted something nearby this facility because a lot of the departments interact um, and it needed to be something convenient for the citizens also. Uh, it worked out well being as close as it is so that we, we were able to do direct uh, fiber connection between here and, and that facility so that the, you know, all of the computer systems, the phone networks and all are more or less as one unit. It, it really works well being where it is. Wow. What's one of the most memorable um, parts of this experience you think that uh, will last with you given the length of time you've been here. Oh, just the this, right? Just this. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, um, <laughs> Being on TV, huh? <laughs> the move. The move was, uh, that'll stick with me a while. <laughs> the, it's take me a while to get over that, but we're, we're good, so. <laughs> the move. The, the move, move was tough. So that day. 
that that okay. weekend. Oh, that weekend. <laughs> yeah. It was a concert. How many trucks did you? Uh, there was four trucks truck? and. Uh, How many movers? Well, they varied by day. The most per day, I believe, was the Saturday. I think there was 24 movers here. And um, we had rented crates and all beforehand and had 500 crates full of stuff and uh, four or five different trucks moving it with the 24 guys. So it was, it was busy. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so. What time would you say one of those days, like a Saturday, what time did you arrive? What time did you end up leaving? I mean, break it down. So the Saturday, um, well, I'll back up. We started Friday. They started breaking down computers towards the end of the business day. So with an effort to keep business as usual on Friday, uh, we worked until fairly late in the evening Friday. And then Saturday morning, we, we picked back up. They were supposed to be here around 10. And I think we went on till probably around 10 Saturday night. And then wow. Sunday night, they came back around 10 or 11 the next morning, and it was another, it was probably around 10 another Sunday night. Plus hour. Yeah, so it was, yeah. wow. there were some pretty long days, but. Well, James, you made it through. Made it. You made it through um, successfully. And again, Paris, that you've exceeded expectations. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for joining it. us here on DC TV 23, the last show, 8700. And it's an honor to have you and tell your story. Well, I'm glad I could be part of it. At the beginning of our broadcast, I shared with you we would be retiring 8700 and starting a new show. I want to take this time to thank citizens of Douglas County who helped me pick the name of the show. This is Douglas County. That's the name of our new show. Our goal will be to bring you a news magazine format show to raise the profile of Douglas County by using storytelling skills to make people feel like their local government is comprised of real people. The show's purpose will be to showcase the work of some of the county services and the people who provide those services and the people they help. I hope you tune in. Thank you for joining me. See you next time.